with the uh, well, I answer I had, I was asking the question what what did Paul refer to when he was talking about the mind the renewing of the mind and uh, and we dealt with how we went through every one of the the uh, the the things that is mentioned up here on the screen the mind the soul the spirit and the heart and how each one of those things can be defined in a different way, but really all of those things put together make up what is what Paul referred to as our inner man. For example, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 16, as you can see it there, Paul said, For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inner man is renewed day by day. And he made that statement, yet our inner man is renewed day by day. And, and that verse right there is, is so clear. We have an outward man that we all can see. I think we can, that makes very clear sense. We all can see our outward man. And Paul said it's perishing. In other words, it's our outward man that's getting, that's getting old. But our inner man, our inner person is the part of us that's being renewed, Paul said, day by day. And we haven't really dug into that word renewed yet, but it means to, to renovate. It means to literally to renew, to make new again, to refresh again, to renovate. And uh, all of us have been a part to some extent with renovation product, uh, pro, uh, uh, re renovation pro, um, projects. projects, yes. And uh, well, I, I guess it's just one of those nights, uh, yeah. but projects. And, uh, and so what that, but get this, that's what we are. We're a renovation project. Yeah. And I'm so thankful that the one who's renovating me and renovating us, and man, he's got a perfect record. Yes. Amen. If there's five stars, he's got a five. He's got a five star. He's he's a perfect record. If he was on Home Advisor, everybody would be going to him. He's he's Jesus. He's 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 a perfect renovator. Amen. And so I'm so thankful for that. But one thing I wanted to include tonight. And, and I didn't talk about last week is this, is that biblically the heart is, is the seat of the mind, the will, the emotions. And the heart, of, the heart of an individual is also could be said as the same thing as the inner man. So, for, for example, uh, I, I put there that the heart, with the heart, we see it in the Bible, the heart thinks. The heart, in Genesis chapter 5, there's many other verses that could be brought out with each one of these. I just brought out a few verses, but the heart thinks. The heart, our heart, uh, wills and, and has desires. It makes plans. Uh, the heart produces our words. Uh, uh, from the heart comes faith. And even, you could say, from the heart comes unbelief. From the heart comes love. From the heart comes hatred. From the heart comes all of these things. And Jeremiah would say, the Lord through Jeremiah would say in Jeremiah 17, 9, that, that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. But, and have you ever heard that before? That the heart is, de is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. And, and he would say, who can know it? Who can know how desperately wicked the human heart is? And that all goes back to sin. All because of sin. But what's incredible is this. is that, I, And I put there, it's on the bottom of the screen, you can see it there. That when we got saved, we received a new heart. And, and Ezekiel brings that out. We received a new heart. And God, what He did when we got saved, we received a new heart. A new inner man, you could say. A new mind that includes a new mind. We received a new thinking process. We received, as some people say, a new inner bent. He poured His love into us. And as we were singing just a moment ago, I pour my love on you. The only way we can really pour our love out to the Lord is because He poured His love out on us. Into us. I think that's Romans chapter 5 and verse 6. He he shed his love abroad into our hearts. And so, what's that? Facebook is locked up and they're asking me to progress. Okay. I'm gonna... No, it says it's going. It says it's all right. <laughs> at, least, at least according to this. Uh, and so, um, 
I'm so thankful the Lord never locks up. Amen. 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 <laughs> we are our men locks up. <laughs> you ever a locked up? <laughs> but our inward man. But anyway, uh, where was I? So um, we received a new heart with it when we got saved. We received, we received a new mind. We received a new inner bent. He poured his love into us. We love him because he first loved us. And I'm so thankful for that because the, the salvation experience, being a born-again Christian, is not just a, it's not just a lifestyle change. I, I know you know that. It's not a lifestyle change. It's not like we change careers. You know, I, I, I was a plumber, but I became a construction worker. It's not like that at all. No, a born-again experience is exactly that. We got born again. And I'm going to emphasize that tonight. We got born again. Um, and, 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 and I'll put a new thing up there. When we, when we received a new heart again, when we received a new heart, what he did is he put his law in our heart. He wrote his law in our heart, wrote, wrote his law in our mind. He put it in there. And primarily that law that he put in our hearts, it's not the ceremonial law. It's not like we're having an inner bent now. I'm going to go kill an animal and offer it to God. That's not the law. But the inner law that he put in our heart was to love the Lord your God with all of my heart. To love him. To put no other God before him. He put that in our spirit. The moral law of God, he put that there. And get that, the unsaved person doesn't have that. Now they may have a conscience, which is a God-given, Every God creates every person with a conscience, which is that God-given faculty on the inside that says don't kill people. That God-given faculty on the inside that, that says, you know, don't hurt other people and don't do that and don't do that. that. That's a conscience and everybody has a conscience. But what happens over time to the unsaved person is that even our conscience can be seared, the Bible says. So that we can't trust our conscience. We can't trust our heart. But we can trust the, we can trust the one who changes the heart. And that's what he does with us when we got saved. He wrote his law, meant primarily the moral law of God. He wrote it upon our heart. So now there's on the in, because of the, the Holy Spirit living on the inside and because really Christ living in us, we want to glorify God more than anything else. At least that influence is there to glorify him. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, in verse 16, Paul wrote this. He said, For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But he made, and he made this statement. But we have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. He made that statement. Who knows? Who's known the mind of the Lord? No, in other words, nobody, even a saved person, even though we have the mind of Christ, nobody can say, God, you did wrong. Or God, you made a mistake. Any thought like that is, is either the, the enemy or somebody else or it's our flesh or, or some spirit, whatever. But it's not the Lord. But he said, we have received the mind of, we have the mind of Christ. And we get this, when we got saved, we received that mind. And the mind refers to our thinking, our decision making, uh, our thought processes. We received his mind. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17, he said, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. And let me ask you this real quick, since we're having this kind of difficulty. Is this too loud, me talking? It's muffled? Yeah. Sam, okay, it's my fault, but we're gonna, we're gonna, we gotta fix that. But <laughs> we're gonna bring a professional crew in here and just fix it all. But um, therefore, he said, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. That's us. That's us. Old thing. We're a new creation. We're in Christ Jesus. Old thing, and he makes the statement: old things have become, old things have passed away. And behold, all things have become new. I, you, we, we know that verse. I think you're familiar with that verse. I know I'm familiar with that verse. 
And I've wondered before about St. Corinthians 5 and verse 17, the thought that's passed through my mind before when, when Paul said, Behold, all things have become new. A thought that's crossed my mind is that doesn't make, that all things have become new? Then if all things have become new, then why do I have some, I still have some uh, stinking thinking? You ever wonder that? I, I, if all things have become new, then how come I still doubt the Lord sometimes? If all things have become new, then how come I still get angry at times I shouldn't get angry? If all things have become new, then how come I still have this? Or how come I still get whatever? Uh, the thinking. How come? And the Lord really, I think the Lord showed me this some time ago. And, and I, I think I read it in a commentary too. Maybe the Lord used the commentary to show me that... When he said all things have become new, first of all, it can refer to our position in Christ. In regards to our position, definitely all things have become new in regards to our position. Now we have a relationship with God. And we didn't have that before. That is completely new. But it also can be viewed in this way. That in comparison to, to, to what we were before, to com in comparison to the old, what we have now is, I mean, it is new. I mean, it is so new. And the word new means new in quality. And if we look at the scriptures to talk about a change that, is, that took place in our life when we got saved, I, I mentioned it last week, but we went from being in the kingdom of darkness to being in the kingdom of light. We went from being a, a, the, having the, the Satan as our father to now God is our father. That's all, that's, that's all things have become new. We went from going to hell to going to heaven. That's all things have become new. We went from being unrighteous to now we are righteous. We are justified in the eyes of God. We are redeemed by the blood of Christ. It wasn't that way before, but it is that way now. That's all things have become new. Praise God. Amen. And another verse here, Romans 6 and verse 13. And what I'm just bringing out here the, the, the point that upon salvation, we received a new heart, a new mind. He said, Paul wrote this, And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. Now when Paul wrote that word members there, and do, and, and do not present your members, that's, our, that's really our inner man and our outer man. That's our eyes, that's our ears, but that's our spirit, it's our thinking, our heart. Every part about us, Paul was referring to when he said your members. It wasn't just referring to our, our, our outer members that we can see. But every part of our being, he said, present your members as instruments. Uh, 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 not, uh, do, not present, do not present your members, our body, our, our spirit, our mind, as instruments of, right, of unrighteousness to sin. But present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead. And your members as instruments of righteousness to God. Yeah. So in other words, present your inner man. Present our eyes, our ears, our mouth, everything about us. Our thought, our, again, our mind. The Lord, my mind is yours. It's dead to sin, but it's alive unto God. And everything that Paul wrote up to this point, Romans chapter 6, was all about our identification with Christ, His death, His burial, His resurrection. And he said, I want you to present yourself. And present yourself just means that. It means to present. It means to like appear, to show up. Here, here I am. Here I am, Lord. Here's my eyes. Here's my ears. Here's my mouth. Here's my spirit. Here's my mind. My thinking. Everything about my, my heart. My trust. What I love in life. What I don't love in life. Here it is, Lord. It's alive to you. And it's dead to sin. That happened. Get this. That happened the moment we got saved. The moment we said yes to Jesus. Our, our whole body, our whole inner man and outer man became an instrument of righteousness to God. And that word instrument can be used, uh, 
uh, it can be translated as a, as a word like a tool or even a weapon. We became a, our, we became a tool in the hand of God for him to use. Now, uh, something else here that in, in the fact that uh, upon salvation, again, we received a new mind and a new heart. But the fact that we need our minds renewed shows us that Christ has given us a new mind and a new heart. Again, the fact that the fact that we need our minds renewed, be re, uh, again, be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Just the fact that we need our hearts and our minds renewed shows us that if, when we got saved, Christ gave us a new mind and a new heart. In, in Ephesians chapter four twenty three, he said, and be, "And be renewed in the spirit of your mind." In Colossians 3 and verse 10, he said, And you have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. And so, I want you know, I just want to dig in here just for a moment, just a little bit more. That, the, you know, the way that you and I are to see ourselves is exactly as these scriptures have brought out. That, that through what Christ did for us at Calvary, we're a new, we got a new mind. We have new thinking. We have a new, a new attitude. We have, we have everything that Christ is, every, all the character of Christ. We have it through our identification with Jesus and, uh, uh, and what he accomplished for us at the cross. Again, what is his is not ours. The fruit, all the fruit of the Spirit, the love, the joy, the peace, the faithfulness, the temperance, which is patience. The self-control, which is really spirit-controlled desires and passions. That's, get this, that's, that's who we are. It's not something that we have to strive for. Or something I have to, you know, work harder for. You know, be, I'm, gonna, I'm, working, I'm, I'm working really hard, God, to, to, to have more of your love in my heart. You know what? The moment we try to achieve it, it's right out of our grasp. Get that. The moment we try to achieve anything, any of the characteristics of God, anything, any, any, of the, any of the virtues of God, any the victory over sin, anything, the moment we try to work for it, it is totally out of our grasp. Because God doesn't give us, He doesn't give any type of anything like that because of our work. Or uh, how hard we were, uh, whatever he doesn't have that he get he gives it all freely by his grace. Amen. And Amen. again, the moment you and I got saved, the moment you and I got saved, that you've heard this before, but that was the greatest miracle that ever took place in our life. Amen. It's the greatest salvation is the greatest miracle that ever takes place in a person's life. And we need to always, uh, all of us, we need to always go back to that salvation experience. Because again, I, I'm, I'm saying it, I'm repeating myself, but it, it, it's, it's worthy of, of, of being repeated. That the moment we got saved, we, are, we got redeemed. And however long that you've been saved, whether that's 50 years or whether that's 5 years or whether it was last year, whatever it is, we're still redeemed. Yes. <laughs> And we can get this. We can remind ourselves of that. A part of the renewing process is reminding ourselves of who Christ has made us. I'm redeemed by the blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so we can get this. We can begin the day and we can go through the day with that, with that thinking. I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed. I've been bought with the blood. Hallelujah. I got pressure. I got I get this I get this pressure over here. I mean it's like, it, it, and it's squeezing me, but I've been redeemed. I'm just using just that's just one thing. I I got this going on. I got this you know whatever uh, happening, but I've been redeemed. I've been bought with the with the blood of Christ. I'm on my way to heaven. I've been justified. There's another one. I've been he, he's made me righteous. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise oh. God. I'm righteous in the sight of God. Amen. I'm going to, man, it's a hard day. Man, it's a really hard day. Things have been going wrong all day long. 
from the moment I got up, I'm not talking about that. I'm just making this up, okay? But from the moment, you know what I'm talking about. You can, we all going to have those days. From the moment, I, even before I got out of bed, things were bad. Things were going wrong. <laughs> and then I had a flat tire, and I, you know, and, and then that person at work was just really irritating me, and I work from home, so that's really hard. So, uh, <laughs> And then, and, and, and then just, you know, I looked on Facebook, and, and then that, oh, that really made it worse. And then, you know, and then and just the whole thing, you know. I just, and then I'm just tired, and I have a headache. And, but you know what? I remind myself, he's made me righteous. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, I'll, also in the midst of it all. Man, I just got just got discouraged, and I just you know, and I I was like, ah, oh, you know what? I I don't know why. What what? Why am I even here? And what's what's you know why why is that person doing that? And all of a sudden we start focusing on the here and you know on the here and now, and start focusing on people and the temporal and just na -na -na -na, and our own flesh just feeds it, our own flesh, and we start thinking things that we shouldn't think. But in the, get this, in the midst of it all, we can stop and remind ourselves, you know what, I'm righteous before the Lord. He has made me righteous. He's made me righteous. We, we, need, we, need, we need to constantly remind ourselves that that's, that's a major part of the renewing of the mind. And uh, uh, so I want to I go on to uh, deal with this here. It's a, it, it, goes right along with what we've been saying but why a question I ask this question why do why do we need our minds renewed why do we need our minds renewed well number one it's because of this it's because we have not yet been perfected and in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 12 is one of the main verses that we see this where Paul wrote he said not that I have already attained or, already, or am already perfected, but I press on, that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. The powerful. This is one of the power, most powerful chapters in the Bible, Philippians chapter 3. I'm going to read it again. Not that I've already attained. In other words, attained speaks of, speaks of a, the idea of like apprehended something. I've, I've apprehended it. I haven't apprehended it. I haven't got a full grasp on Jesus yet. And it speaks of our understanding. It speaks of, again, our knowledge of Christ, our experiential knowledge and understanding. I don't have a... I don't, I don't, my grasp on Jesus isn't even close to his grasp on me. But that's my heart. I want to, I want to, I want to know him more. And he said, and he said this, uh, and, or I'm not, I'm not perfected. I haven't reached that point of perfection yet. But I press on. If we just stop right there, what is Paul pressing on for? What, and the word press, means really, it's a word picture of like an athlete uh, that, that's just striving harder, that's just working, that's just pressing forward for the, for the finish line is the idea. For the, pressing towards the finish line. So what is, what is he pressing for? He said this, that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. That's the terminology there just means that I may apprehend him like he's apprehended me. And uh, that word, when he, he, he makes that statement there, not that I've already attained or, or already perfected. That word perfected, if you look, go back to point one there, it's a Greek word, teleo, and it means to completely fulfill. It means to reach the goal or mature. And I'm going to say it again, to, to completely fulfill, to reach the goal, to mature. Now, one of the things about that word perfect or perfected, especially in the King James or in the, in the, well, in the King James uh, Bible, and not just the King James, it's most, a lot of, most translations, it translates that word teleo or teleos, and it means as the word perfect. But sometimes in our, our culture and our thinking, it misleads us because when we think of perfect, we think of it in a different way than then the early, the early church would have thought of that word teleo, 
uh, back then. We think of perfect, we think of like there's no flaws, we think of it in the sense of flawless, right? Flawless, there's no, we, when we think of perfect, we think of sinless, like I'm perfect. Sinless, no flaws, no character flaws, no bad thoughts at all, never, 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 perfect. <laughs> but in the, in the New Testament, when, when Paul wrote that, it, uh, it context, the context uh, determines the way he's using it. In Philippians chapter 3 and verse 12, he was, he was uh, talking about the realm of, of maturity. I haven't reached that point of total maturity. I haven't reached that point of total maturity in Christ. That goal in which I am 100% like Jesus. And really, get this, that, what he was talking about, that won't be attained until we get resurrected. When we're, when we're, when we're resurrected, when, that rap, when the rapture takes place, or God forbid, or if, if, if we go by the way of the grave before that point, um, we'll be with Jesus and we'll be perfected. Uh, but in, uh, and, and we'll, as John wrote in 1 John chapter 3 and verses 1 and 2, when he said that, that uh, you know, we don't know what we're, we're going to be like, but we do know this, that when we see him, we shall be like him. We shall be like him. Perfect, really, in all of our, in, in every aspect of our being. But this is an awesome thing, that God sees us, as you can see it in the screen, God sees us as perfect in Christ positionally, but still in need of sanctification or spiritual growth conditionally. In Hebrews 4, uh, uh, 10 and verse 14, Paul wrote this. He said, for by one offering, and we know what that is, that's the cross. For by one offering, he, that's, that's uh, God, has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. It's a great verse right there. For by one offering, that's the offering of Christ at Calvary, he has perfected, and that's speaking of our position. He has completely perfected us. In other words, in our position, as we are seated in Christ in heavenly places, uh, of, uh, Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 6, as we are seated in Christ in heavenly places, there's no, there's no growth process happening there. There's no maturity process happening there. All the maturing process is happening here on earth in our condition, in our inner man primarily. Our outer man, again, is Paul, going back to Corinthians 4, verse 16. Again, Paul said our outer man is perishing. Is That's not being renewed. But it's our inner man that's being renewed day by day. And, and that's what's being perfected. That's what's being sanctified, as he wrote there in Hebrews 10 and verse 14. That's what's, that's, that's, that, that's what's changing little by little, here little, there little, uh, precept upon precept, line upon line. That's what's being changed. And so, and, and it's awesome there. He said, for by one offering, again, that's Jesus, what, what he accomplished for us at Calvary, Christ has done both. He's perfected us, positionally and he is sanctifying us conditionally that's why you know that that the, uh, some have wondered you know what is the message of the cross you know uh, the the message of the cross in one verse and worn one line hebrews 10 14 pretty much summarized it for by one offering he perfected us positionally and he's sanctifying us conditionally by one offering what does that mean? It means that, 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 that the object of our faith is to be upon Christ and what He did for us at Calvary. Not, you've heard this before. It sounds overly redundant. But not, a, not, not the wood. It's not some superstition. It's not a picture on a wall. It's not that. It's not a mantra. It's not repeating words, you know, like I've dealt with before. I won't go over it again. It's not just saying the right words. It's not, like, not, it's not having the right lingo. That, that, uh, it's, that's not it. It's our dependence. Our dependence in Jesus and what He accomplished for us at the cross. Yeah. And uh, 
And that is how the Holy Spirit sanctifies us. That's how he sanctified us. And so uh, moving, moving forward here. And, um, and if you have any questions at all, please, please ask or statements or anything. Please, uh, please ask. So another thought here of why we need our minds renewed is because of this. Number two, we still have a flesh that has sinful desires. We still have a flesh that has sinful desires. And uh, this, this sometimes can be confusing because we just dealt with, you know, and for example, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17, where Paul said, behold, again, behold, all things have become new. We're a new creation. We're, if, we're, we're, if we're a new creation, and then how come we still have, you know, how, how come we still have a flesh to deal with? Um, well, and I'll, I'll give you some verses here. Romans chapter 7 and verse 18, where Paul wrote this. For I, for I know that in me, that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells. For the will is present with me, but how to perform what is good I do not find. That's pretty plain right there. For I know that in me, that's in my whole being, that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells. That's pretty plain and simple, right? Now, talk, now what's interesting, Paul is writing that as a born-again believer. He's born again. He's saved. He, he's even filled with the Holy Spirit. Some, some make the argument and try to say, no, Romans 7, that's Paul's pre-conversion state. Well, the, the problem with that, and, and, and even though we, I can, we can disagree with someone on that and, and still, get, still love each other and still get to heaven, but the problem with that view is that a person who is unsaved, yeah, a person who is unsaved, they can be religious and want to do right. But the way that Paul writes it in Romans chapter 7, it goes way, way beyond what an what a unsaved person is desiring. And, uh, and, and so, uh, but he makes this statement again as a born-again believer, for I know that in me that is in my flesh nothing good dwells. Then in, in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 17, Paul said this about our flesh. He said, for the flesh lusts, which means desires, a strong desire, against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. That, and, the, and the verse before this says, Walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. How many have ever heard that verse before? Walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill. And that word fulfill actually is the, is, goes back to that Greek word telia, uh, teleos. It means fulfill, fully mature. Walk in the Spirit, and those fleshly desires will not reach their full maturity. Because fleshly desires, when they reach their full maturity, you know what they do to us? They, it's self-destruction. They destroy us. Again, fleshly desires, sinful desires, when they reach their full maturity, it, they, that's basically destruction. But he said, walk in the Spirit, and that will not happen. <laughs> And thank God for that. Walk in the Spirit and those fleshly desires that you have that are within yourself, they will not reach their goal. Now, uh, what Paul did not, did, what he did not say is this. He did not say in Galatians 5, 16, walk in the Spirit and you will not have any fleshly desires. He didn't say that. He said, walk in the Spirit and they'll never reach their goal. And, and that's, 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 a, that's an important thing. Yeah. Uh, especially for those uh, who, uh, they, they hear the message of the cross and they, and they hear it. And they hear uh, things like, and it's true, but they hear things like, uh, you know, if you believe in the message of the cross, you, you know, you're going to want to read the Bible and you're going you're to want to pray and you're going to want good things and all this. And, and as the believer, they begin to understand the message of the cross and that light bulb goes on and it's like, whoa, 
You feel like you've been born again all over again. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You feel like you've been born again all over again. I've, and I've had that experience. And, and, there's, and, it, and, and as you grow, and as we grow in our understanding in what Christ has done for us at Calvary, there's a whole lot of light bulbs that will go on. That's the sanctification process. Light bulb going on in every room of the house. Okay? But when we first began to understand it, it was like the light bulb went on in our living room. <laughs> Whoa! Man, I'm justified. That's the idea. I'm justified. Praise God. Not by what I do, but what, but, why, but what He did. And all this time, I've been working so hard at it. Making myself miserable, but man, I come to a revelation, and this is it. We come to the revelation. He did it all. Hallelujah. I don't have to work for my victory. We're working so hard. But again, this is the message of the cross. We come to the realization. He did it. Yes. He did it. Not me. My, my righteousness. He did it. Victory. He did it. Peace. I don't have to try to earn it through my earn it or merit it through my prayer, even though we still pray. But I have to have that mindset of trying to earn it now. Praise God. And the light bulb goes on. But as, as we walk in that understanding of what Christ did for us at Calvary, what will happen is this. Again, the light bulb has gone on. It's, it's, it's on. But then we start, just, it's just like, again, we, the terminology that we use so often, it's like we got born again all over again. You know what that really was? We experienced? We experienced, that, that was the renewing of our mind. That was the renewing of our mind. Because we realized, hey, it was his work and not my work. That's the renewing of our mind. He made me righteous and I don't have to strive for righteousness. He saves and sanctifies the same blood that, that, that we say so often. The same blood that saved me, that brought me in, is the same blood that will keep me in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And again, and the light bulb is going on. And it's going on. And it's, and, it, and it's on now. It's on now for a week. It's on now for a year. The light bulb is on now for two years. And life is settling in. It's just like when we first got saved, first get saved, it's like, man, praise God. Everything is, the grass is greener. Just, the sun's blowing their nose. So, you know. <laughs> The grass is greener, and and uh, that's that's the one. That's just the awesomeness of the, the small buildings. But praise the Lord. I don't know if they can't hear it on the internet, but um, anyway, so it's all good. Um, we're family, right? It's we're family. Just keep on doing it, amen. Um, but life, you know, life settles in, and then you know we. Uh, Life settles in, and we realize, but we start having trials. We start having trials. I know about we get, we get saved, and then we start having trials. The trial of our faith settles in. And then the thoughts of, and, and, and say amen or something, respond if, if this has been you. We could say, and then the trials of life start settling in, and then we, the thought can hit us, did I really get saved? What happened? Where's God? Where is God? Where is the Jesus that saved me? What happened to that fire that I had, that zeal I once had? Where's that zeal now? Right? Where's that zeal now? Get this. Nothing has changed. At least from God's perspective. Him looking upon us, nothing has, has changed. Christ's work at Calvary, nothing has changed. What's changed really is this. What's changed is the fact that it is our understanding has, has drifted. Our focus has drifted. The, and, and we're not remembering what brought us in. Like we need to. Okay, now the person is, the believer is in that place and we're working, working, working we're, and we're wondering, where, why am I so miserable? Where's the zeal? Well, man, why am I failing in this? And maybe, maybe the sin nature is revived and, it's, 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 and you're in bondage and then you begin to understand the cross again. 
You're brought back to our first love. And it's like, oh, wow, praise God. And the weight is lifted. Again, maybe victory is there again over sin. And again, the joy is brought back. You're, you're a child of God. You, you're still, nothing, that hasn't changed. But now you're understanding it. You're, it's, that understanding is brought to you. Man, praise God, I'm righteous. Not by what I do. Not, it wasn't by what I do, but, what, but by what Jesus did. And I believe in that. Okay? The message of the cross. The light bulb goes on again. And then life settles in. And trials hit. And the same exact thing, same exact process goes on. Man, maybe, maybe this message of the cross thing, maybe it's just made up. Maybe it's just, you know what? Maybe it's, maybe whatever, whatever the lie is. Maybe it's not as, maybe it's, maybe I, uh, you know what? They got it, but I don't. And maybe it's just, you know, whatever. And, uh, and, 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 all, and we can be lured back into our old mindset or we can be lured into thinking, you know, I guess this thing isn't real. But so the same, the same process that happens after we get saved is the same process that can happen after we understand the cross for sanctification. But here is, here is the important thing. We'll, end, we'll, end with, we'll close with this. We always need to come back to our base. We, need, we need, always need to come back to our, our, our origin spiritually. And our origin spiritually is Jesus. That's where we began. That's where new life began for us. It began with what Jesus did for us at the cross. <laughs> And, and that's where it began. And that's really, again, that's how our minds are renewed, just by remembering Jesus. It's all you. And yes, yes, you created me, just like Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 says, we are created in Christ Jesus for good works. We are His, but we're His workmanship. We're, he's working on us for good works. Because without good works, how will the world ever know? Get that? How will the world ever know unless the light shines? And so uh, we were created for good, and we realized that. But we realized that it's not our good works that we earn anything. It's all Him. Praise the Lord. And we remember that. We renew. We, our minds are renewed. So uh, uh, in, um, in Romans 6, 12, he, Paul wrote this. He said, Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in its lust. And a lot more could be said there. We'll, we'll continue this next week, but about our flesh. Uh, but that flesh is that part of us that, that, um, uh, that wants to trust in ourselves. The flesh is that part of us that trusts in what we see, feel, and hear in the temporal. That's, that's our own flesh. But thank God for this. He's given us victory over sin. He's given us victory over the devil, and He's given us victory even over, even over our own flesh. Our own stinking thinking, He's given us victory over it. There's victory in the blood. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's all stand to our feet tonight. Same thing come back. Uh, praise the Lord. There's victory in Jesus, victory in the blood, what He did for us. Praise God. And uh, thank you, Lord. So thankful for that. That it doesn't matter. It does not matter if it's the world. It does not matter if it's the devil. It does not matter if it's uh, another person, another person's flesh. It doesn't matter if it's our flesh. We have victory over it all through Jesus and what He did for us. That's where the victory is. Praise the Lord. It wasn't. It's not in a. It wasn't in a baptismal tank. It wasn't even in coming in a church. It wasn't in paying some money. It wasn't in that. Putting some money in the offering plate. It wasn't in shaking the pastor's hand. It wasn't in all that. It wasn't signing your roll. It's not in all that. It's all in Jesus. Amen. All in Him. Praise the Lord. Let's pray tonight. Father, we're so thankful tonight.
for all that you've done for us. We thank you, Lord, that, Lord, even in our perfections, Lord, you see us perfect. Thank you, Lord. You see us perfect in your Son, Jesus. You know that we're flawed. You know that we're like that piece of clay on the potter's wheel that has to be, Lord, formed and changed. We thank you, Lord, that you're forming us into your image. You're using everything in life, Lord, to do it. Using everything, Lord, because you are the master potter and we are the clay. Yes. We thank you for that, Jesus. We thank you. Lord, we ask that you would help us, that our eyes would be continually upon you, that we would trust in you, Lord. We would lean upon you in every area of our life, Lord, that our thought life, Lord, be, would be conformed and confined, Lord, to you, Jesus, and what we have in you and in your word. We thank you, Lord. And we say it all tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Right, we're going to take up, you know, I just put the offering bucket.